Okay, guys, welcome back to another video from CXC Matuta. So in this video, we will be looking at the New York State Common Core Regents Algebra 1, June 2019 past paper. And we will be looking at questions 27 and 28. So two questions in this video, 27 and 28 from the New York State Common Core Regents Algebra 1, June 2019 past paper. All right, so um, it said uh, graph the following piecewise function on a set of axes below. All right, so this is a piecewise function we are looking at here. And note that the first piece of the function here, that's an absolute value function, in general, absolute value function looks something like this. All right. And the, the second piece will be an equation of a line. All right. So we have to take note of the domain for each piece of the function, all right? So let me actually rewrite this information down here so that when I scroll up, I can able to see um, the, the equations, all right? So we have the absolute value function is being graphed on the domain negative five is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to two. And we have the equation of the line, which has a slope of negative two. So therefore the line is gonna actually come down like this. So from looking from left to right, the line is coming down because of the gradient or the slope is a negative number. All right. And so plus 10 um, on the domain two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to um, six. All right, so let's, let me scroll up here to the graph paper. All right, all right, so, so that's the reason why I write the function there so that when I'm graphing it, I can see um, the function, all right? All right, so um, we ask to first um, graph this PC, which is an absolute value function on the the, the domain negative five is less than or equal to X, is less than or equal to two. All right, so let me put in some values here um, on my X and Y axis, all right? So this is my X axis here that runs horizontally. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight and so forth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, all right? Okay, I'm just, I'm just putting some values here on my X and Y axis. And then note that what I have here is an absolute value function on the domain negative five, is less than or equal to x is less than two. So the, the first thing I can do here is to actually find the, the y value for the endpoints of my of my domain. Okay. So um, when x equal to negative five, for example, and I and I put that into my absolute value function, all right, I replace this x here with um, negative five. Remember the absolute value function will always give you a positive output. All right. So the absolute value of negative five is five. So when X is negative five, all right? One, two, three, four, five. Y is positive five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. That's the first point there on the absolute value function. Um, the second end point here, I'm going to consider when x equal to two, but note that um, this two is not included in the, is, is not a part of the graph. So I'm gonna have an open circle here, all right? Because it says less, x is less than, all right? But it's not equal to two. X is less than two, but it's not equal to two. So when x is two, right? So if I put that two in my absolute value, replaces x here with two, it's gonna give me two, because the absolute value of two is two, all right? So when X is two, Y is gonna be two, but I'm gonna have, instead of a, a solid circle, I'm gonna have an open circle right there. 
All right, as you can see that this would be my graph here. Okay, that's that's my absolute value. Um, um, graph. All right, so as you can see, this would be a solid circle there because negative five is included, right, um, in the function, and this would be an open circle here because two is not included. Okay. And for the equation of the line now, we're basically going to look at the, um, we're going to look at it the same way as the uh, absolute value function. We're going to sort of plot the endpoints here. All right. So we have um, negative 2x plus 10. This is negative 2x plus 10 on the domain two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to six, all right? So I'm, I'm gonna substitute when x equal to two because in order to draw a line, you need at least two points, all right? So if I plot the endpoints of my domain here, all right, um, uh, when x is two or when x is six, then I can basically connect those two points and get the, the, the line, all right? And let me actually label this one here. So this one here um, is the absolute value function, all right? And this would be the f of x is equal to the absolute value of x, okay? That's this um, graph there. And the other graph is the graph of the line that you're drawing now, all right? So when x equal to two, I'm gonna replace this x here with two, so that becomes negative two times two plus 10, all right? And so this is negative four plus 10, that's giving me positive six, all right? So when x is two, y is six. One, two, three, four, five, six, right here. Of course, it's gonna be a solid um, circle uh, because two is included in the, um, uh, in the domain, all right? Is, um, it's part of the graph, all right? And so if I now plot the point when x equal to six, I'm gonna substitute x equal to six into my um, function here. So it's two times six plus 10, all right? So negative two times six is negative 12 plus 10, that's gonna give me negative two. So when, when x is positive six, right, y is negative two. Again, that's gonna be a solid circle because um, six is also included in the domain. It's all, that means it's gonna be a part of the graph as well. So if I simply just use my straight edge here, or you can use a straight edge in the, in the exam and simply connect these two points here. All right, that would be the, the graph of um, the line f of x is equal to negative two x plus 10. Of course, in the actual exam, you will actually have a better, a better line than this, all right? You just use a straight edge or a ruler to draw the line here, okay? Um, of course, if you wanna know exactly where the line crosses the x-axis here, you can simply set y equal to zero and solve for x, all right? So, um, for example, you have negative two x plus 10, that will equal to zero. So I set the y equal to zero and solve for x. So now I have negative two x is equal to negative 10, divide both sides by negative two, and then x is gonna to equal to five. So, so this is correct, all right? The, the, the line will intersect the x-axis at um, x equal to five, all right? So this is the correct graph here for the piecewise function, all right? And the reason why they call it a piecewise function is because the, the entire function which is all of this, is consists of two branches or two pieces. The first piece is the absolute value function, right? And the second piece will be the, the equation of the line. And you combine that, it's called a piecewise function, okay? All right, so um, let's move on to question 28.
Okay, so question 28, they want us to solve this um, equation here, 5x squared minus, sorry, 5x squared is equal to 180 algebraically, all right? So you have 5x squared is equal to 180, and they want us to solve for x, all right? Solve. So the first thing we can do is to um, get rid of this five here. We can divide both sides of the equation by five. Right? Five cancel five, so you have now x squared is equal to um, 180 divided by five, which is 36. All right, now how can I get rid of this square here? Remember, I'm trying to solve for x alone. I'm trying to solve for x. I'm trying to solve for x, not x squared. So I need to get rid of this square here. How can I get rid of a square? the square root, all right? So that because the opposite of a square is a square root, that's how, how you can undo a square by taking the square root, all right? Of both sides of the equation. Because remember, anything you do on one side of the equation, it will do exactly the same thing on the other side of the equation. So this square root, you get rid of that square there, so you leave with x alone is equal to plus or minus um, six. The square root of 36 is six. And of course, um, x can be a positive or a negative value, all right? Because if you take, if you square a positive six, the answer will be 36. And if you also square a negative six, the answer is also 36, all right? So the solution here is that x, um, x is equal to six and x is also equal to negative six. Right? So these are your answer. Right. Now, if you have time, you're more than welcome to actually check. Um, it's actually a good idea, whenever, especially when you have to take the square root of both sides to get two um, values for x. It's always a good idea to do a quick check um, uh, to see if these values will actually solve the original equation. All right? So basically what I mean is that I'm going to take the original equation, which is 5x squared equal to 180, and I'm going to substitute um, x equal to 6, all right? And then x equal to negative 6. So if I try x equal to 6 first, all right? So check x equal to 6. Right? So I'm going to substitute x equal to 6 into the original equation. And if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, then that x equal to 6 is a solution. And then I'm going to check when x equal to negative 6, all right? So when x equal to 6, you have 5... Um, multiply by six square is equal to 180, all right? So um, five times six square is gonna be 36 is equal to 180. So five times 36 is 180 is equal to 180. Okay, so since the left-hand side of the equation is equal to the right-hand side, all right, then this solution here, x equal to six is in fact, a solution, all right? We can also check for now when x equal to negative six, all right? So we have five x squared is equal to 180, then five x, so five multiplied by negative six squared is equal to 180, all right? And now I'm checking when x equal to negative six, and then I have five times negative six squared is 36, that's equal to 180. Five times 36 is 180. That's equal to 180. That's a true statement. The left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, and therefore, um, the solution x equal to negative 6 is, in fact, a solution. All right? Um, so that's it uh, for this video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the video. Also, consider clicking the notification button so that you, so that you can be notified of future videos. All right? So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.